Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today for our SME webinar, Mentoring and Support. My name is Julie Foster and I work for the Department for Education in the Skills Directorate. So I'm now going to hand over to Stephen to get us started. Good morning. Hopefully everyone can uh, hear me. Uh, so quick introduction. My name is Stephen Dorr. I am a general manager at In Cornwall Limited. Um, down here in Cornwall. We're in the hospitality sector, so we have three sites spread across Cornwall and we are mainly a pub restaurants, um, but we have B&B um, accommodation available as well, along with um, uh, function facilities as well. So um, yeah, pretty broad, well spread out around the very rainy county of Cornwall this morning. Um, we've been very lucky over the last couple of years to finish in the top 50 for the SME employers. Um, including last year when we got to go and pick up that award in Parliament, which was a great honour. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's the intro. So we'll go to the next slide, please. Uh, here's a little little sum up here of some of the guys that have finished the courses in the last 18 months. Um, again, their chef backgrounds, accountancy, front of house. Um, we do a wide range of different courses throughout our free sites. Um, and then the next one, if that's okay. Thank you. And a little bit more about us quickly there as, as a company and our team members there and in the photos accepting their awards locally and nationally. Um, all sorts of fantastic people that we've had on board. Um, I think one of the most important things we'll touch on as well is it's not just the younger, younger generation apprenticeships. We've got a few apprentices that are over the age of 30s as well. So not, not just the um, typical straight out of school or college as well. So um, if we go to the next one. If that's okay, please. Uh, so at the moment, we've got apprentices going through different stages, um, hospitality team leaders and team members, chef the parties um, and throughout different levels. Um, you've got a couple of bits there also on what we've done previously. So it might sound counterintuitive, but we'll get to it in a moment. But we've even had people go through accountancy um, apprenticeships as well. If we can get the best out of our team members whilst they're with us, whilst investing in their future, um, it makes, you know, it's a really good hiring tool for us as a company, but it shows a real, real investment into our team members as well. Um, Darren, who is our head chef at one of our sites, is our biggest success story that we'll talk about later. Um, he's just done a full management course, but started with us at the age of 15 um, um, as a as a part timer, basically doing the dishes. And is now a head chef in one of our sites at the age of 24. Um, he's our biggest success story, really, having completed four different apprenticeship levels. So, um, yeah, he's a golden boy in our company. Uh, if we go to the next one, please. Perfect. So um, mentoring, supporting and onboarding our apprentices. Um, the Probably some of the biggest things for myself, my wife as, as the general manager of the company is you've got to get the right people um, and it's far easier said than done. Onboarding the right candidates at the start probably take quite a lot of the, the time and the effort. We don't like to invest in people that we're not sure on basically and it is the toughest choice to make. Um, we're quite lucky in the sense that we've got people already within our company um, and then we can place them onto apprenticeships. So you've already got a character reference for them. You know what they're going to be like, whether that's worth that investment. Bringing people on specifically, so advertising for apprenticeship roles, that's completely different. Um, it's not all success at the, at, at the first go, as I'm sure you're all aware, and we will touch on that later. But um, yeah, I believe the, the best way to go about it is the honesty. So when it comes to the apprenticeships, Honesty and feedback is is the main things, and that's where our success rate's been. Last year, in the last 12 months, all 13 of our apprentices completed. The last two years, we've had 100% completion rate, which is quite a you know big success for us in, in itself. We've got about 80 to 85 team members across the three sites, including cleaners, accountant, um, bits like that. So to have 13 apprentices is, is a good percentage. Um, and again, with the support of all team members, um, not just ourselves, um, yeah, they, they all successfully passed through um, in the last 12 months. Um, warts and all is a good way of putting it to tell the apprentices exactly what they're going to be expecting. We're in a lucky position, as I said, that we've had apprentices that have completed courses that are with us in full time employment. So it's really important you can buddy them up, find out from them the good, bad and the ugly of the courses. 
um, finding those previous apprentices and as us as leaders and uh, ultimately the people that are going to be onboarding them and watching them and helping them through the process. Um, it's really important to be honest and the expectations so they know exactly the dreaded homework and, and bits that they are going to be expected to put in outside of their working weeks. Um, we like to assign a mentor. So that could be different depending on the position that they're in. Um, it can come from ourselves. So even the company director is a mentor to, to one of our kitchen managers at the moment. Um, and we do that based on what we think the needs of the person is, who's going to have the best relationship. Obviously, it's site dependent. So, for example, my wife will take on the site that she runs. I have a bit more of a broad spectrum, so I work across, across the company. Um, we have a head chef who is of, naturally is going to be great at um, being the mentor for our younger apprentices in the kitchen. So the mentor assigning part of it is really important for us. It helps them to have a little bit of a buddy almost, someone that they can go to and ask their questions that might not be their college lecturer, might not be ourselves because it can be quite daunting sometimes we're aware to come to uh, your general managers or your com company owners, um, you want to go to the right person. So buddying them up, having a mentor is really important. Scheduling time within their working week, um, allowing them to provide some of that time during their work is really, really important. Um, again, I can only speak for our hospitality trade and that can be really difficult certain certain times of the month or certain times of the year rather, sorry. Um, to, to provide that time, but it's essential. It also is part of that investment. So if that means calling them in one hour earlier, um, you know, planning into their road today that they have an hour to sit down and do some college work, it, it's really important. It makes them feel like, again, you're, you're with them with, on their journey. You're not just signing them up for an apprenticeship and hoping they get through it. You're really investing. You're taking someone on one time with them as well. Um, that all kind of counts in towards that sort of time allowance within that that working week. The importance of staying ahead with our apprentices, um, we are we are very honest and, and upfront with them. So we check in. So we will check in literally this morning before I joined here. I checked in on one of our young ladies who needs some light encouragement every now and then on her one file. Um, that's really important as well. So it's um, for us making sure the mentors are keeping a good eye on them, checking in and then pushing them to stay ahead. We have had many stories over the last few years where they, you know, you will always get some apprentices that are absolutely fantastic. They had at the curve, really, really invested. You will get some naturally that towards the end of the course um, comes to assessment time and they are lagging behind a little bit or they're dropping off a little bit and they need that light encouragement. I don't think that's any different in any walk of life, not just apprenticeships. So it's really important that we get them to stay ahead so they don't have that panic that they have a test or an assessment. They have a lot of coursework to hand in, off the job hours to, to provide and upload. Um, again, it's just cushioning them along politely along the way um, but the importance of staying ahead, I think they they probably bang their head against the wall slightly throughout the year. But when they get towards assessment time, they realise why you've um, encouraged them to do so. The assessments and observations towards the end of the courses, um, it's really important for us. We're all very different. I know myself, if it's just um, some form of coursework I've had to do, um, then I'm, I can fly through any kind of test. For example, we're all very different. I know I am not personally fantastic in test conditions, being aware of what your individual apprentices need. Um, it's quite, again, it, it's difficult, it's time consuming because you are having to make that investment in them. Um, you are somewhat pandering, if, if that's the right word, to, to their needs. But it is so important that you do that. You're showing that supportiveness. Again, you can have previous um, previous apprentices. Um, it's again, we, we're quite lucky, really, that we have loads of previous apprentices that are in full time full time employment with us. Um, I don't know how easy that will be in your sectors, but I'm sure for your providers that you'll be able to contact people that have completed courses, get their assessments, bringing them in if it's from another company, and just giving you know, an hour one-on-one -on -one time to relax people during observations or assessments. It's, it's really important to make, make sure they're feeling comfortable. Not everyone's as confident as, as the next. Um, and then the incentives, um, what we kind of offer, we work really closely with our training providers. So we do a big college, uh, college meal, we call it, at the end of each year. Um, which is quite unique. I don't, I don't know too many other companies that do it. I know our college are very thankful for it. 
we take all our apprentices that have passed and then all of their um, assessors um, out for a lovely meal. You know, it's, it's a good, you know, it's a nice something to thank them. It's a big well done for them as well. It's a little reward at the end. Um, depending on the business, I mean, us, for example, we do offer financial rewards at, at, at the end. Um, I know that could be difficult some places, um, but that's for higher grades. So it's sometimes we like to push our apprentices not just to merely pass the courses as well. We want to support them right through and then offer them that incentive at the end that if they can if they can complete, there's X, Y or Z financially available. It could be a promotion. It could be you get this done um, and we'll be able to promote you up through the ranks in, in the kitchen or the front house team um, or even moving sites if there's uh, an opening at another site. Um, but yeah, in, in particular, the, the working with our um, trainers and bringing them in on that incentives as well. So whether it is just a nice posh meal, somewhere nice to let their hair down and a thank you. Um, and again, we, we do that for the the lecturers as well, which I know they love us, love us for that here in Cornwall. So we're one of the only companies that actually thank more than just the apprentices. We take the uh, individual lecturers out for a meal as well. So um, if we go to the next slide, please. So it's like I said at the beginning, it's it's warts and all. It's not just all the good things and, and the success stories and going and picking up awards in Parliament. There's a hell of a lot of work that goes goes behind it as well. Um, we, you will face loads of challenges. We face challenges, like I said, with a young lady this morning that I've had to check in on. Um, I think I've read it in in a, a sporting thing before, but yeah, you, your team are your biggest asset, but they're your biggest cost, not just financially, I mean, as in your time. So as leaders in our in our um, industries, we know that our team can, can be on the end of the phone at any hour, any day, no matter where you are. Um, but honesty is the best policy with them. Um, I think all in all, I think that's why we have had such a good success rate, why we've won awards as a company for what we've done um, is because we are really upfront and honest and we encourage our team members. It's becoming harder and harder with younger people. I feel like an old man saying it, but uh, younger people uh, to be honest um, and face to face communication is something um, I feel like a, a caveman, even at my age saying um, with technology, emails, WhatsApp, constantly being bothered about uh, work or help or this or that. Um, some of the negative things, when they won't say it to, to, to your face, they won't come to you, they're a little bit shy. So it's really important to be approachable, be open. Having that mentor is a uh, concussion of blow. We're not silly. If we've got a, a young, say, a, a part-time 16-year-old young lady, she might feel more comfortable naturally go into um, her mentor than, than approaching myself or the company owner with a query. They might just feel like they see us running around 24 seven all the time. Um, they don't want to bother us. It's important to be open, important to be there for them. Um, I will make a point naturally, even if it's just going to make a coffee. If I haven't seen that, that team member for a couple of days, maybe I've been at a different site, I will check in. It can take 60 seconds just to go and ask, how are you going? Is there anything you need? Has your mentor been with you? Have you got this time set aside? And it normally counteracts any of those challenges that you see later on. Um, a lot of your apprentices or our apprentices over time, they won't initially, sometimes you can feel that they're not appreciating the effort that you're putting in. Um, again, we've had a fantastic group of people in the last uh, 24 months, to be honest with you. But within that, there have been three or four people that actually do you know what college isn't for me or this isn't working or i'm not going to sit the final assessment or you know and i'm not really appreciating everything you do um for me personally i know i'm quite um older than my years as such i i've struggled to to understand why they won't accept accept your help um but it's really again it's really important to be um understanding we're not all the same what these apprentices will do for you ultimately when they pass, because that is why we're in it. You know, they can make our business better. They can provide us with, you know, even if it's these awards and bits like that, it helps us to hire in the future. Um, so yeah, it's really, really about understanding, even if they're not feeling appreciative of your help, um, that why we're doing this, what's the end goal. The outside influences as well. So pay, every company is a little bit different. Um, we pay above what we have to, but not, you know, we're in hospitality and we're in Cornwall. So no one's getting rich doing this by any means. Um, but 
you know, we, we pay a little bit more than what we have to. Um, they appreciate that also with the financial um, investment that we're putting them into college as well. I think it's really important to be open and honest with them. Yes, these apprentices, if they're successful, could look elsewhere. Um, it's really important to have those rewards at the end of the courses um, and that kind of keeps them in town. This is where all the the investment, the mentoring, all the little one on one stuff, it comes in into fruition when they may be uh, tempted to go elsewhere towards the end of a course or just look at the bigger picture for themselves. Um, it, it can be quite quite challenging. So I, I just really wanted to quickly touch and I, I don't mind answering any questions because we, we have had a huge amount of success with our apprenticeship schemes, um, but it's it's come with a lot a lot of work. So I don't want to sit here in front of you all and say that everything is always rosy and it's easy and we've got everything perfect and we are we are perfect at it because that is certainly not the case. I don't know anybody anybody that is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm more than more than happy to answer any questions on the on the challenges we have faced. Um, and if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and then ultimately, what what we're doing it for. Um, you, you know, again, there's no 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 point in lying about it. What what we're here for is you might have a gap to fill in in your industry. Um, we have somewhere somewhere in our team that we need to fill a slot. Um, you know, there, there could be many different reasons, but ultimately, we all want to be successful in, in whatever we're doing, the business and the bottom line, and that and that is the the God's honest truth of it. Um, these apprenticeships and then promoting what the success that you've had has made it for us extremely easier in a very very difficult trade like hospitality to hire um, i'm sure everyone is more than aware that hospitality has faced a huge amount of challenges um, coming out of covid and the decline in in recruiting has, has been pretty horrific cornwall down here in particular naturally as i'm sure you're all aware most of our competitors see huge spikes over the summer period we're very lucky we've built um Free, free businesses here that have, have got good all year round trade, but we are no different to the others, the seaside resorts and bits like that, where we do need to take on extra team members um, throughout the busier seasons. Um, when we are able to promote um, purely by, by advertising or word of mouth in our local areas, through the fantastic work that we've done as a company with our apprentices and we have really close relationships with the college or we've gone and visited a secondary school or something like this, it might seem like tiny little bits and using using up your time um, at the time that you deliver those speeches and, and, and go and visit these schools and colleges, but they do pay dividends. Even if you can just get that one or two team members to come on board. Um, team retention as well. We have multiple people across our sites now that have done multiple courses. So Darren is our biggest success story. He started at 15 years old. By 24, he was a head chef. He done his level two and three. He's then done management courses in, in catering, front house. He's absolutely fantastic. He's just bought his own home. So there's the personal benefits for him as well. So the team, reten team retention and the uh, progression opportunities that you can show there. Um, even if you're starting from scratch and you've never had an apprentice before, I think it's looking looking forward. It's the long term goals of the business, what it enables you to do going forward long term. Um, and then ultimately, it's the investment in your business. Um, you know, these people care and they genuinely, genuinely do. We're, we are very lucky with everything that we put in, all that hard work we just spoke about, putting that in nine times out of ten those team members genuinely care about about your about your business um, and because of that their sales the quality of what they're delivering everything's improved and at the, at the end of the day the bottom line is is that they are a happier person in their workplace it provides a, a better quality of service to whichever industry they're in and hopefully all in all that helps helps your bottom line in your business uh, grow as well so um yeah that's kind of a snapshot hope i didn't babble for too long um but that's that's where we are as a in the hospitality of of hiring apprentices so thank you thanks stephen that that was brilliant um a really useful insight uh, to your obviously your sector and and really how you do support the apprentices from the initial onboarding and critical that you know you, you get the right people and um, like what you said about you know mentors are assigned or buddies uh, you know it's real it sometimes it's just a, the wording people a buddy is more supportive you know the way things are but yeah and also um most of all you did say about the biggest challenges it's not all rosy out there you know um and that's really good and hopefully people will have, have gained a lot from that 
So I would just like to say a massive thank you today. Uh, I think you've done a brilliant job in showcasing mentoring support. There are a couple more slides, but I'll go. I'll just go through very quickly. Um, just a reminder that the on the screen at the moment are the rest of the uh, webinars for this year, um, and there should be going in the chat now a link uh, to the registration page if anybody wishes to register. Um, and also as well, we will be sending out a survey if you could complete it, because we really appreciate your time, um, not just to complete it, but also it shapes and defines what we do moving forward. And I think there's a poll just gone in uh, to the chat as well. If you could complete that, that would be fantastic. There are a couple more slides, um, one in particular about our YouTube channel, um, where you can get access to all the the recent webinars that we've done um, and we will make sure all this all, all goes out in a, a pack to you in probably in, in the next few days or within the next week and all the webinars will be listed on there and you can subscribe as well which will be great and the final slide we just put in there was around um, the announcement that was made on Monday about the uh, the additional funding that um, the government has given us to to boost apprenticeships. Obviously, I'm not going to go into great detail with you now, but it's giving more additional funding to demonstrate the commitments employers have, and also by SMEs who do not pay the levy at the moment, that the contribution of the cost has now been removed. So thank you everyone for attending today um, and um, have a great rest of the day. Thank you.